Okay, we should be recording now. Does anybody want to see anything from D2L or from WebAssign? Does anybody want to work any problems off of the uh, book? Not getting much response. Should I, we're, this week we're supposed to be going over 1.4 and 1.6. Should I work some example problems to try to get y'all started? Yes, please. Okay, you want to start with 1.4? Yes. Okay, let me uh, get the camera hooked up. Takes just a second to do that. Got to click about three things. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, can y'all see my uh, pad of paper? Switch to a blank piece. It says I'm sharing, so can everybody see my uh, pad of paper? Yeah, I, I can see it. See it, okay. All right, well, I guess we'll start with 1.4 then. If y'all have any questions or any problems you do want to see, feel free to chime in. 1.4 is about solving quadratic equations. I'll just show you the page. Okay, I think we just did the first two sections. I don't have the assignment right in front of me. Maybe I can find it here. Five to 15 and 20. One twenty-three, five to 15. I skipped the next one, 29 to 45. Okay. So they say solve this by factoring. So we're on page 123, section 1.4. The directions are to solve by factoring. Try to remind you how that works if you know your factoring patterns. First one is number five x squared minus 8x add 15 equals 0. And uh, there we are, we're catching up. Now, I don't know if you, how familiar you are with factoring. It's been a while since you see it. But this is a pattern with a square letter and number. And with no number here, or it's a 1, but they don't write it, you can write 2. It's a parentheses. Your x and x go here. They multiply back to the x squared. And you need two numbers that multiply to 15. 
but add to negative eight. You want to multiply to the end. Two, no, I call this the two number method. Multiply to the end, add to the middle. I can write these down. You're looking for numbers that multiply to the end be one times 15, but they're never going to add to eight. Or you could have three times five. And yeah, sure enough, three and five would add to eight. So I'd have a three out of a five. And the only way you're going to get them to add to negative eight is if they're both negative. And then the two negatives multiply to positive 15. Everybody kind of foil this back in your head. X times X, X squared, X times negative, negative 5X. Then a negative 3X is your negative 8X. Multiply, you get your positive 15. To finish up, call this number one, this number two. You set each piece to zero. Add the three, X equals three. In effect, you wind up switching signs. I'll write out number two, but you can tell it's gotta be five. X minus five equals zero. Add the five, X equals five. So these are your two answers. In WebAssign, they want a comma separated list. I think they put them in a box and you'd write three comma five in WebAssign. This is what they call their comma separated list. You get these messages, my internet is unstable. It's all raining. Okay, now I don't know how well you know your factoring, but if you do not remember any of your factoring, you're free to use the, to use the quadratic formula. It looks like negative B, add and subtract a big square root of B squared minus 4AC all over twice the A. If you look at this one, your A is 1, your B is negative 8, and your C is 15. If you don't see a number for the A, it's automatically 1. Would anybody like to see this worked out by the quadratic formula? Or are you all familiar enough it would uh, waste your time? Not getting much response. Factoring is much quicker than the quadratic formula if it factors. The quadratic formula is kind of made for problems where they do not factor. And it's the only way you can work it or solve it. Uh, some of these you've got to scramble around, like take a look at problem 15. Still on page 123. I'm getting some feedback that the ebook does not have page numbers. You can find these same problems in the exercises at the end of the section. So you look up section 1.4 1, 1. in the ebook, section 1.4, look in the exercises. And the exercises there exactly match what this is. Right, this one's going to be a little scrambled. Fifth, uh, 15 says solve x squared equals 5 times x plus 100. So you've got to collect all the pieces to one side, terms to the left. So I'd write it x squared equals 5x plus 500. Remember this five must multiply through. Does everybody know if I shift to the left, they change sign? Minus 5x minus 500 equals zero. Because you're going minus 5x, same thing to both sides, minus 5x, minus 500, 
minus 500. Now, this factors apparently because the directions say to factor it. This will be a much tougher factoring. We are going to look for numbers that multiply to 500 and add to negative 5. Uh, tough to do that in your head. I can write them down over here, eventually get to it. Or I can go, uh, that's way too hard. I'd rather just plug and chug in the quadratic formula. What would y'all rather do? Can I get a response? Factor it or use quadratic formula? A uh, factoring. You'd rather see it factored? Yes, please. Okay. Again, the idea, you're looking for two numbers, multiply to 500 and add to negative five. It's tough to keep them all in your, straight in your head. I systematically, you'd start, I, I work my way up the number line toward the number. So you always start with numbers multiplying to 500. So one times 500. Again, I'm looking to see if they might add to negative five. Hope it's obvious that this won't. Two goes into 500 and it'd be 250, two times 250. Doesn't look promising. I don't think three is gonna go into 500. Four probably does, is that 125? All right, so on a calculator, if I find, not sure, I can go 500 divided by four. Yeah, and it's four times 125. All right, don't think those are gonna get, I'm looking for a difference of five really between them. Five, 500 divided by five. This is pretty painful, but uh, oh yeah, five times 100. Nope. So you'd get 105 or 95, depending on your signs. I think six, seven, eight, nine, doubt it, probably 10, 10 times uh, 50. See, now I'm getting the difference of like 40 or 60. All right, 11, 12, 13, 14, I don't know about 50. Yeah, 15 probably works. Five, 500 divided by 15. Probably would have already, nope, 15 doesn't work. Probably would have. I think, it's, I think it's 20 times 25. Ah, we have 20 times 25. Someone's volunteer. They got so painful, somebody jumped ahead. Yeah, I'd have got there eventually. In fact, with the quadratic formula, I'd probably have the answer already. <laughs> But in any case, I've got an X and a 20, and an X and a 25, and I just got to puzzle out the signs. They're going to have to be opposite to give me a negative. One's got to be plus, one's got to be minus. And since I want to wind up with a negative, the larger one's going to be negative, and the 20 smaller will be positive. So a 20 subtract 20X subtract 25X is going to give me my negative 5X. Then these will multiply to negative 500. Then all I got to do is switch the signs. X is negative 20. X is positive 25. Questions about that? Um, can you do one where like there's a number in front of the X squared? Okay. We you have to do the whole thing, just like the like the small process of like the factoring part. Yeah, we have quit teaching that factoring. If there's a number in front of the x squared, we're going straight to the quadratic formula. We, we've given up on teaching that factoring method. It's called guess and check. I, I'll give you an example. Okay. For, you know, for example, you know, 2x squared minus 5x minus 500. I don't even know if this factors. It probably does. You have to really cook them. But we would use the quadratic formula. We're, formula. We're, we're not teaching the factoring method for this anymore. If you know a method and want to do it that way, help yourself. But we're not teaching. Could you that. work that in the quadratic formula? So you want to see one with a quadratic formula? Yes, please. Sure. So we'd start, uh, how about something like, uh, first one I see on the page there is uh, 33. And by the way, you, that section where it says complete the square, forget that method. We're not using that method either. Strictly factoring, if you can factor it, or quadratic formula is all we're using. Page 123. 
33. 2x squared, add x, subtract 3, equals 0. Now this may factor, you're welcome to try it. It does not work if it factors. It doesn't work by the two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 1 because the 2 is screwing you up. So we're going to use quadratic formula. Does everybody know how to spot your A, your B, and your C? Your A is 2, your B is 1, your C is negative 3. I'll write it out. Negative B, big square root, B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A. Everybody seen this formula before? Not getting any response. Has everyone seen this yeah. before? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. One of the most famous form, uh, formulas in all of math. And it's strictly just a uh, plug and chug. In fact, I'll, I'll, you can tell when you've worked out the root whether it would have factored or not. I'll point that out when we get there. So negative B makes negative 1. Big square root. I usually work out the square in my head, 1 squared. But I'll, for the first one, I'll show it. 1 squared is still 1. 4 times 2 times negative 3. Divide by twice the A, 2 times 2, which will be 4. I usually work the square out in my head. I usually work this out in my head just to speed things up. Negative 1, add and subtract, big square root, 1. And then these two negatives are going to turn positive, And it looks like I'm going to get a 24 and divide by 4. Should we pause for station identification? Are we losing anybody? No. Okay. So then you work out the 1 plus 24 and you get 25. Okay, this is the signal it would have factored. When this root comes out clean or a whole number, it would have factored. But we've got to go on and go negative 1 plus or minus 5 over 4. Square root of 25 is 5. And now we've got to work this out. If this does not come out clean, it wouldn't, like it came out 26. It would not have factored. And you can actually quit. It's actually easier because we wouldn't have made you mess with it. You could have just left it negative 1, add and subtract square root of 26 over 4 and be done. But when it comes out clean, Work it to this. I usually kick a case one with a plus sign. Negative one, add five, divide by four. That means it would have been four over four, which is one. Case two, negative one, subtract five, divide by four. Negative six over four reduces to negative three halves. If you wanted the factoring, you could take these answers, reverse signs, play around, and come up with the factoring, but there's no point. We've got the answers. That's what they wanted. Questions about this? No, thank you. Okay. Anybody else have questions about this? No, I'm good. No. Do you want to see any more of these? Or do you want to see a couple problems out of 1.6? Uh, we can move on to 1.6. Sure thing. Okay, in 1.6, they give you more general equations. We're going to focus in on two methods. In 1.6, I guess I asked for 
about page 138. Again, it's in the exercises at the end of section 1.6 in the ebook. We're just going to go 5 to 35 odd on the first page. These are in the assignments I made in the video assignment. So the first section really is about factoring. And then the second section is about fraction equations. So really problems 5 to 23, you really solve with factoring. And problems 25 to 35 are fraction equations. They have a completely different method. They'll tend to be a lot longer. All right, maybe, we can, well, I don't know. Number five is too easy. X squared minus X equals zero. Now, you could theoretically use the quadratic formula. Your A would be one, B negative one, and your C would be zero. It works kind of way overdone. It's much quicker to recognize a common X here pull out a common X and you'd leave X minus one. When you set the first piece equal to zero, this is like piece one, piece two, piece one, you just get X equals zero. Keep freezing. How do I? I tried to move there. Yeah, it's raining outside. I don't know if that has an effect on the internet or what. But can you tell from piece two that x equals one? All right, kind of very simple one really out of last section. Why don't we try one like 17? x to the fourth, add 4x four cubed. Add 2x squared equals 0. I don't know if this uh, makes you freak out or not, but there's no quadrat there's no formula for anything above a square. So these have been cooked to factor. If you notice the common factor is always the lowest power, x squared. Write a big parentheses. You're left with x squared. Everybody know how to factor this and pull out an x squared? In effect, you're going to lower the powers by 2. Plus 4x plus 2. You can always multiply. In every factoring step, you can always multiply it back and get the line above. If you, it doesn't work, uh, you're screwing up. x squared, x squared is x to the fourth. X squared times 4X is your 4X cubed, and X squared times 2 is your 2X squared. Now, I can get the lead piece real easy. You're setting X squared equals 0. Do a square root, and X equals 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Lost the little sloppy there. This, notice the quadratic. I could look for two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to 4. Can you tell they don't exist? 2 times 1, 1 times 2 is all the, the only way you're going to multiply to 2. Can you tell you're never going to add to 4? So what method are we stuck with? Quadratic formula. You'll have to set x squared plus 4x minus 2 uh, plus 2 equals 0. Can I go ahead and charge in, plug and chug into the formula without writing down the A, B, and C in the formula again? In other words, can I speed things up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I do, you want negative B, that's going to make negative 4. Add and subtract a big square root. The B squared is 16. 4 squared is 16 minus 4 
times the A is one and the C is two. And it divides by twice the A, which would be two. Is that too fast? No, that's fine. Okay. So X is gonna be negative four, add and subtract, a square root of eight, divide by two. And you're pretty much done. I'm not gonna make you simplify the square root of eight. You can just pretty much leave it alone. WebAssign might want a comma separated list, in which case I'd write it negative four, adds, add square root of eight, divide by two, comma, negative four, subtract square root of eight, divide by two. That's the comma separated list that WebAssign likes. Okay, looking a little further down the page. Y'all want some uh, problem? Oh, we're about 25 minutes in. Y'all want some problems out of the next section, the fraction problems? I think you can just do like one or two in the fraction equations and that should be it. Okay. What happens is, I'll write down a fraction equation problem. Let's uh, try a simple one like 25. Still on page 138. This is uh, 1.6. Solve z plus 4 over z plus 1 comes up 3. Okay. There's a couple of issues involved with these things, technical details. First issue is we can go through and solve this. And we might get, if, so, if we solve, we might get z equal to negative 1. Any answer you get has to be able to be plugged in and give you the same number on both sides to be correct. If this happened, can you tell that we got a problem? What if I plug in negative 1 right here? Can you tell I'm going to get a zero on bottom? And an answer of negative one would make me divide by zero. That's infinity, illegal, it will never match three. So negative one is not a legal answer. So what I do on fraction problems is I look over the whole thing and I kind of form an illegal number list. and z equals negative one is on the list. And it's the only one on the list for this one. Do you, can you tell how I got the negative one? I got it basically by setting this to zero in my head. And then you subtract one over, z plus one equals zero, minus one, minus one, z equals negative one. It's like switching the signs on the quadratic. In other words, if I go down through and solve this, and I'm about to show you how to do that, and I come up with z equal negative 1, and that's my only answer, that means the correct response is no solution. And the book likes to trick you with stuff like that. Now, a lot of times I'll come up with two answers. I might come up with another number and the negative 1, in which case i got to cross off the negative 1, and I keep the other number. Any questions about that? No. Okay, watch for this because they love to trick you with this and it will come up the rest of the semester. Let me rewrite the equation and we'll get started on it. <coughs> Wait, can't you just uh, try plugging in numbers? Because like I just tried plugging like Z as one. And so like one plus four over two equals three, right? Because four divided by two is two, and then two plus one is three. Okay, very good. This one's simple enough. You actually could do that. Uh, good luck doing that further down the page, though. So what happens is there's a procedure to solve, 
And I guess maybe you don't need it on this one, but further down the page, when they get a lot more complicated, you'll need the procedure. And the way you get started is you multiply through by the common denominator. I call this the I hate fractions method. This will clear the fractions. A common denominator is every piece in the bottom once. This one's pretty simple, which is why you could do it in your head, basically. The common denominator on this one is just z plus 1. So I'm going to do this really slow. I'm going to put z plus 1, because it's two pieces, I'm going to put them in parentheses. And I'm going to put it beside every piece. And we're going to watch what happens. 3 times z plus 1. This is going to come up the rest of the semester as well, clearing fractions out of equations. Stuff on the same level multiplies, and because, again, there's two pieces, it's going to distribute. z squared adds z. But here is what I want to have happen. Because these are identical, you cancel the fractions or the pieces of the leaving just the 4. On the other side, it distributes as 3z add 3. And my fractions are gone. This is how you're going to do every one of these in this fraction section. Now it's a matter of combining all the terms. And here's the rub. Sometimes you'll have a z squared survive or some sort of square survive, in which case you want to collect square letter number and factor it or use quadratic formula. Sometimes the z does not have a square. And if you just have straight first power terms, it's a matter of letters to the left, numbers to the right, and divide by whatever coefficient. It, there's no way to predict which way it will come out at the beginning. You've got to read what's happening and be able to do the correct thing. Since I've got a square, I'm going to subtract 3z. And can I speed this up by kind of doing this all at once, subtract 3 and subtract 3? That'll give me z squared. 1z minus 3z is a negative 2z. And 4 minus 3 is 1. This side I get 0 because 3z three, uh, three is going to 3 minus 3. So you want a 0 on one side. And you want all your pieces, square, letter, number in that order so you can recognize your a, b, and c if you want to use the quadratic formula. Because you can't guarantee when you get a quadratic formula they're going to factor. This one does factor. So I'm going to do it that way because it's quicker. Your two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to negative 2 have got to be 1 and 1 z minus 1, z minus 1. Well, this one, you get the z of 1. When you switch the sign, you get z as 1 for both parentheses. You don't have to write it twice. But what I always do, instead of boxing away, I always check the illegal number list. But the illegal number was negative 1. So that means 1 is going to work up here, as you just showed. You actually figured it out without even doing all this. And so the answer on this one is just c equals 1. I know you're out there going, God, that was so overdone. I figured that one out. OK, great. Try guessing the answer to 31 or the answer to 33. You'll be here all day. So anybody? Any more questions on that one, or do you want to see a more complicated one? Can we just see a more complicated one? Sure. Start on the top of a clean sheet of paper. We're going to be here for probably the next 10 minutes. Do you have a favorite, 31 or 33? Which problem is just crying out to you?
31 looks like the real long one. You want to see that one? Uh, sure. That's fine. Okay. You're still on page 138, 31. One plus one over X plus one, X plus two is equal to 2 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x plus 2. OK. We actually succeed in working our way through this and get the right answers. It will have grown some hair on our chest. This one's going to be tough. Does this make you go, why did I sign up for this class? Not getting much response. Let's make our illegal number list. Nothing worse than we'll solve it all the way down, proudly report the answers, and then get it wrong because they're the numbers you get are illegal. See, what I do is I switch the sign. OK, got to be a negative 1 from there and a negative 2 from there. And then over here, these have got the same piece. You get a negative 1 from there, a negative 2 from there. You don't have to list them twice. If any answers come up negative one or negative two, they're illegal and I won't report them. If both of them come up this, then there's no solution at all. If I get one of these and another number, which happens a lot, then it's the other number that's legal. Have we, have we gotten that across? Not getting much response. Any questions about the illegal number? Uh, no. Okay. Now, your common denominator, again, we said to use every piece twi um, in the bottom, but you only need them once. So you really only need x plus 1 and x plus 2. These repeat, I don't have to, it, it would be way overdone, to, but legal to use like x plus 1 squared or x plus 2 squared. It, it's way overdone. You don't need to do that. You just need each piece once. I'm going to write this out real slow. I'm going to write these two pieces beside every piece here. And you can see the cancels. You get cancels on all these pieces, and then it'll just multiply up here. I get x plus 1, x plus 2 times 1 plus, plus 1, x plus 2 times 1 over x plus 1, x plus 2. Doggone, I write too big. I'm going to run out of room. So there's the left side. Equals. All right, I'm going to try to write the right side. here. This is the left side. I'm going to call this the left side, the right side. Blackboard, I could write it all out in one line, doggone. OK, right side. I get x plus 1, x plus 2, times 2 over x plus 1, add x plus 1, x plus 2, times 1 over x plus 2. I haven't actually done anything. I've just written it out. That's why it makes these so long if you're going to teach it. I could just go through and show you all the canceling, and you'd be like, whoa! So I'm, I'm trying really hard to show the canceling and what happens so that you get correct results uh, down the page and have any hope of getting the right answer. Are we losing anybody? No. Uh, no. Okay. No cancel here. This is strictly going to foil out. I hope y'all are good foilers. X squared plus 2X x times x, x times 2, plus 1x, or x, plus 2. 1x, 1 times 2 is 2. OK, maybe I can collapse it back after this, because these entire pieces cancel. I'm left with a plus 1. All right. 
equals, now I'm going to the right side. The x plus 1 cancels. I'm going to distribute this kind of backwards, 2x plus 4. And then on this piece, the x plus 2 cancels. The 1 here distributes, but you know, nothing changes, plus x plus 1. So I've collapsed it. Now I can get it all on one line. Lost anybody? Um, do we have to graph this? No. Because like, oh, okay, okay. No. Dude, that'd be very hard graphing. You'd have to graph the left side, the right side, and look where they cross. So no, they're not asking you to graph it, and we won't make you graph it. Okay, and, but so like the, like the vertical intercept, like for like the left, it will be z zero two, and like for the one plus one over x plus one, x plus two, the vertical intercept will be zero two, right? And then on the right side will be zero five over two. If you're graphing it. I guess you're looking for the x-intercepts. It was hard to interpret what you said without actually seeing the graph, so I'm really not sure. This really has oh, nothing okay. to do with graphing. This is, this okay. is strictly methods down to, to solve equations. Okay. All right, can you, can you tell? I do have an x squared on this one, so it's a matter of bringing all these terms over, but I think I'll simplify both sides before I do that. So x squared, we add a 3x plus 3. 2x plus x is 3x. 2 plus 1 is 3. Here we're getting a 3x plus 5. X, 2x plus x is 3x. 4 plus 1 is 5. All right, now I'm going to bring the 3x over, which is going to make advantage on both sides. x squared plus 3 equals 5. And uh, God, I hope I'm doing this right. Sometimes they work out cleaner. Uh, let's see on the right side. 2x plus 4 and x plus 1. Okay, 3x plus 5. All right, so then my, um, minus 5, minus 5, x squared minus 2 equals 0. Okay, uh, I could use a quadratic, but the b would be zero. So since this happened, you can really go x squared equals your two, and x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two. Take a square root on both sides. That's the simplest way to do it. Because you, you can't factor this. There is a pattern where you go x squared minus four. If the two had a root, there's a factoring pattern for that. But you know, uh, maybe I should risk embarrassing myself and look up the answers to this. Notice the plus or minus root 2 is not illegal. Uh, usually, I'm used to them working out a little cleaner, but I can't spot anything. If anybody spots anything I messed up, I'm happy to go back and look. Maybe I should look up the answers to the back of this, even at the risk of... Uh, Looking like an idiot. Plus x plus one. Yeah. Three x plus three. Three x plus five. Anybody, y'all got, mind me taking the time to look up the answer in the back? Just double check. I, I don't spot anything. No, I think I think what you did was right. Oh, you think so? Like, yeah, I think um, both that like x one will be like negative square root of two, and then uh, x two will be positive square root of two. Positive so you're right. Two, x so equals. So you're right. X equals positive uh, plus or minus square root of two. Okay, we're we're in one six, aren't we? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I can't spot anything. You, you, they usually work out just a little cleaner, but this one didn't. No, no, th th that's right. Okay. 
It was one six problem 31, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what they have. I can show you. Here's my answers in the back of the book. Problem 1.6, problem 31. It's over here in this column. One point, you can't see the one point. There's section one seven or down here. So this is one six in problem 31 has plus or minus square root of two, yeah. And they're not illegal. The illegal numbers were negative one and negative two. So yeah, that's, that's how that one works. And we're at uh, basically 45 minutes. So anybody, uh, have any more questions or comments before we end the meeting? Um, no, I'm good. No, that's good. Thank you. Should we uh, put a whole bunch you. of those problems? Yeah, that's easy. What, do what now? Uh, I don't know. You don't think we should put a whole bunch of those problems on the test? Oh, sorry. I couldn't hear you. Oh, um, no, no, no. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few more like them in the book. You can hit me on the next Zoom meeting. Uh, these 12 o'clock Zoom meetings seem a little jinxed. We've had two of them canceled already. But we'll do our best on Thursday to hold another 12 o'clock Zoom meeting and one at nine as well. Um, you said you made a video to show where the assignments and the quizzes are, right? That's correct. It's in D2L. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. It's down at the bottom of the column. I think it says module three video assignments. All right. You said any module other, three? I think it's under module three. Okay. Okay. At the bottom of the left hand column of D2L. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other comments or anything? Otherwise, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and end the meeting and we'll have another Zoom meeting 12 o'clock Thursday. Hopefully. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the meeting then. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.